assalamu alaikum students so i'm back again and this time with yet another new topic um the topics that we will uh, cover in this lecture are listed in this transparency mostly we will be talking about a new phenomena drift drift is a special type of motion of the charge carriers in semiconductor which is influenced by an applied electric field across the semiconductor sample and then we shall be talking about the conductivity and resistivity which is the property of the material uh, derived from the motion of the charge particles within the material and finally we shall talk about diffusion and some other interesting aspects of carrier motion in semiconductors <coughs> now to move on to explain the drift motion and diffusion motion I would like to go back and revise uh, what we did in the last few lectures in the previous uh, two or three lectures we derived some important relationship based on the classification of semiconductor materials that is whether the materials were doped and were designated as n-type or the material were uh, p-type and we also calculated carrier concentration that is free carrier concentration in thermal equilibrium as well as in non-equilibrium when I say non-equilibrium I mean when an external perturbation uh, is um, uh, present for the semiconductor sample and also we discussed the two mechanism which uh, generate as well as recombine that is alter the carrier concentration in thermal equilibrium those two processes were discussed in detail in one of my previous lecture under the title generation and recombination so to sum it up the free carrier concentration whether in the n type or in the p type material is subject to the condition n p is equal to n i square if as always in my lectures the reference is that of n type material n silicon at room temperature though so the free carrier concentration n in the first equation is obviously will be equal to the donor impurity that we have added in the middle point you will appreciate that if there is a generation taking place uh, optically or by uh, bombarding some high energy particle radiation on the sample then an enhanced generation rate will result which ultimately will um, enhance the recombination rate so the net recombination rate is mathematically expressed by the excess carriers that are being produced by the enhanced generation rate now I will begin with my proper lecture uh, about the transport of charge carriers in semiconductors I shall um, define two important mechanism in today's lecture that is one which is called the drift motion and second which is called the diffusion motion of the charge carriers in a semiconductor material the drift motion is that motion of the charge particles which takes place under the influence of an applied electric field to the silicon sample or some device and diffusion takes place when there is a concentration gradient present in a given material both these processes are different from each other and yet both are important because each one of them contributes towards the current uh, flowing across the junction um, in PN junction in fact both these uh, motions take place because we bias the junction in the forward bias is the uh, diffusion current which becomes significant and uh, there is also the drift current due to the minority carriers present so both these motions will be apparent in a few minutes let me first begin with the drift motion here in this transparency I've shown a schematic illustration 
of how we apply an electric field to a given silicon sample. Uh, let's say the material is n-type. So there is a, if you apply a voltage V across the two terminals of this n-type material, then following the law of electrodynamics and the Newtonian mechanics, the charged particle will experience a force which results due, the, due to the presence of this applied electric field and the electric field value or strength of the electric field is shown on the right side of the uh, transparency which is the gradient of the potential uh, which exists within the silicon sample. So the electric field as conventionally is from a positive terminal of the battery towards the negative terminal and conventionally the electron particle the electron being negatively charged particle would move op opposite to the field as shown by the red line in my transparency but the current flow would be in the same direction as the direction of the applied electric field so in this case the, uh, this transparency is an illustration of the current generated by electron when it moves under the influence of an applied electric field. Let's say now we repeat the same schematic uh, diagram for the p-type sample. Again the holes are now moving within the semiconductor sample under the influence of this applied electric field which as I mentioned before is calculated by the gradient of the uh, potential uh, that you have connected across the silicon sample. In this case, that is for hole, all the directions are same. The hole uh, moves in the same direction as the applied electric field shown with the red uh, line and the current flow is also in the same direction as the direction of motion of the hole. So the electron uh, generates current and similarly the holes generate current too when they move under the influence of the applied electric field. Uh, here is an example which I shall be using many times in most of my lectures because as I mentioned before semiconductors are very sensitive to the temperature and the thermal energy for a given temperature plays an important role as well. Since in my lectures, uh, many reference temperature ziyadatar abhi tak room temperature liya hai aur silicon mein room temperature par jo thermal energy hai wo is simple formula se calculate ki ja sakti hai which comes out to be about uh, 25 milli electron volt jase ke humne calculate ki aur aapko yaha nazar bhi aara hai is transparency mein. To thermal kinetic energy ke baad ab mene ek aur cheez calculate ki hai which is the thermal velocity to aap kya dekh rahe hain ki agar mera silicon sample jiske abhi pichli do slides mein mene n type sample aur p type sample dikhaya jinko dono samples ko mene bias kiya yani electric field ke tahat jisme free electrons or free holes move kar rahe hain to un free electrons aur un free holes ki अगर आप कैनेटिक एनर्जी देखें रूम टेम्परेचर पे तो वो 25 मिली इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट है और थर्मल वेलोसिटी बिकॉज ऑफ रूम टेम्परेचर फॉर द इलेक्ट्रॉन इज अप्रोक्सीमेटली ऑफ द ऑर्डर ऑफ 10 टू द पावर 7 सेंटीमीटर पर सेकंड इन सिलिकॉन व्हाई डिड आई कैलकुलेट दिस थर्मल वेलोसिटी इज इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज यू विल सी इन अ मिनट दैट आई एम गोइंग टू कंपेयर दिस थर्मल वेलोसिटी विद द ड्रिफ्ट वेलोसिटी I haven't explained the term drift velocity yet even though I have introduced the concept. So we will see in a minute what is this special velocity which we have termed at this point as the drift velocity. Let's look at this transparency again. Supposing there is no applied electric field, the silicon sample is in thermal equilibrium at room temperature. That is temperature is 300 Kelvin. The electric field is zero. Zero electric field simply means that I have not connected 
the device or the silicon uh, sample with any uh, voltage. I have not applied any voltage, I have not connected it with any voltage source. So since the electric field is zero but the, div but the material is at room temperature, therefore the free electrons and free holes already present in this silicon bar would have a thermal energy of the order of 25 milli electron volt was so important and what is or what is the characteristic uh, nature of the motion of free charge carriers due to this uh, thermal energy you know it already that the motion thermal motion of the charge carrier is random because of this random thermal motion the particles moving particles because of this thermal energy when they move they do not increase, they do not travel any appreciable distance in space. Why not? Because each time a thermally moving electron encounters a collision center, it collides and then as shown in this um, left side um, of the slide, it loses the energy which it has gained and return uh, uh, and executes or starts with the next motion. So the thermal motion, characteristic of the thermal motion is that it is random in nature. Now let's look at the right side of this slide. Here now I have applied an electric field. When we apply an electric field, the electrons or holes will observe or experience an additional motion that is the motion due to the force of this electric field. Hence there are two component of forces or two component of motions now in a sample which has been connected with an applied voltage or where the electrons are subject to an additional electric field. So we have a drift motion due to the electric field and we have the thermal motion because the material is or the sample is uh, held at a certain temperature. Let's explain what happens or let's apply or revise our classic uh, laws of uh, dynamics. They are electrodynamics as well as Newtonian mechanics. That if we place let's say an electron in a silicon sample, if the electron is present in silicon sample and there is an applied electric field, then this electron, due to this electric field, obeying the laws of classical Newtonian mechanics, would experience a force which is expressed by this relationship Q into E. So this force acts on the electron due to the electric field, which in this equation is designated as E. The strength of this field would depend upon the gradient of the uh, potential uh, applied across the semiconductor sample. Now we have although we have not calculated the drift mo uh, velocity the, the magnitude of the drift velocity at this point but in the previous slide you did calculate the thermal velocity component at room temperature for electrons in silicon which comes out to be about 10 to the power 7. So we say that even though the motion, extra motion due to this field is there has now been added an additional component due to the field motion has been added yet it is not strong enough to overcome the characteristic nature of the thermal motion and what was the characteristic nature of the thermal motion? The randomness. So electrons while moving under the influence of the electric field they are still undergoing collisions because this, the real crystal still contains the scattering centers with which moving electrons are colliding continuously just as they were colliding when the electric field was not present. So the basic motion of the electrons is still uh, the same. That is, 
the electron is moving due to thermal motion it is undergoing collisions with the scattering centers yet because of the presence of the electric field now it tries to attain a certain net directional motion which is designated in terms of the electric field if it is the hole then the hole would try to move along the field if it is an electron it would move in the opposite direction to the field i had mentioned just now in my previous two slides that the electron collides or the motion of the electron is random um, even if the field was uh, uh, when the field was not present the electron motion is random even in the presence of the uh, electric field the electron still continues to collide let's list down now what are those uh, what are the causes of the collision that electron undergoes while moving in an electric field or what are the nature of these collision centers which uh, cause this uh, collision and cause the electron to lose their velocity and hence hinder their acceleration as demanded by the newtonian mechanics the most important uh, reason or cause for electron scattering is the lattice vibration because semiconductor is placed at a certain temperature and in some devices or for some operation it is needed that we increase the temperature as the device or the sample temperature is increase the lattice uh, the atoms or the lattice of the host crystal starts to vibrate and hence the electron has a higher pro probability of collision with the lattice atom as the lattice vibration enhances at increased temperature the second cause of scattering is we discussed in previous many previous lectures because your material is doped now in n type you have ionized doped impurities in p type you have ionized acceptor impurities electron being negative holes being positive of obviously they will experience forces and hence deviate from their original path when they encounter when they reach in the vicinity of a ionized acceptor impurity or ionized uh, donor impurity so these are the two fundamental or important causes of uh, charge carrier scattering in semiconductor devices but then there is another factor which uh, becomes important when there are unintentionally doped uh, atoms present in devices or material i have used the term uh, unintentional because the shallow impurities that is the acceptor atoms from the third group of the periodic table and the donor impurities from the fifth group of the periodic table that has been doped by us intentionally that's why they are called donor or acceptor impurities that we added ourselves to enhance the conductivity to enhance the free carrier concentration and to make the material either n type or p type but then there are certain other impurities which come into the which add into the impurity uh, into the silicon sample even without our wanting it that's why i've used the word unintentionally and these unintentional impurity centers or, or uh, crystal defects they originate why in the pro process of device or material fabrication and there is again uh, another phenomenon which is electron electron scattering hole hole scattering or electron hole scattering so these are quite a long list of scattering centers which can cause the electron uh, which cause collisions or hindrance in the motion of the uh, electron uh, in the presence of when it is moving in the presence of an applied electric field i shall be discussing in the next next lectures only the two important um, collision centers namely the vibration of the crystal structure that is the host 
crystal, uh, lettuce, crystal atoms, and secondly, the impurity atoms. Let's talk about, let's calculate numerically the drift velocity. Using the simple uh, Newtonian mechanics, we can calculate that the, if the force is applied to the charge, then according to laws of classical electrodynamics, force is equal to Q into the strength of the electric field, F is equal to Q into E. The second law that we will apply is the Newtonian mechanics, that is, if an electron is placed, uh, if the electron experiences a force F, it will undergo acceleration. So combining the laws of electrodynamics and the laws of Newtonian mechanics, we see that the electric field strength gives rise to the force and the force in, ten, in turn generates or gives acceleration to the motion of the uh, acceleration. It produces acceleration in the electron uh, motion. The velocity that we get um, in terms of these two, com by combining these two equations can be expressed by this relationship. But here, this relation or this velocity V is different from the velocity that the electron would have acquired if it were to move in so-called vacuum. Because there, in vacuum, the electron would accelerate obeying the laws of Newtonian mechanics, which means in a given time interval t, its velocity will in increase by an amount dv. However, what is happening here in the real crystal, as I just uh, explained, that the crystal is full of scattering centers. The electron, while accelerating between point 1 and point 2, it may undergo collision due to lattice vibrations or w due to scattering with the ionized impurity atoms present in the crystal. What will happen? The electron which has gained energy while accelerating will lose its energy upon collision with the lattice atoms and impurity atoms. Hence, it will not accelerate as uh, demanded by the two um, uh, classical equations or relations or laws. Its velocity, it will not undergo acceleration. It will have rather a constant velocity. That constant velocity of the charge carriers under an applied electric field is given this unique name, the drift velocity. So drift velocity is expressed by the equation that I have written in this uh, transparency. But this drift velocity does not increase when you increase the applied electric field. This drift velocity in real semiconductor materials remains constant or in other words what we are trying to explain here is that the electron does not accelerate rather it does move but moves with a constant velocity. However this constant velocity is proportional to the strength of the applied electric field and this constant of proportionality is designated in the bottom of the uh, slide as mu. So what is mu? Mu is defined as the mobility. So this is the simple concept of drift velocity and mobility. So carrier mobility designated as mu is a constant of proportionality which says that in a given semiconductor material for a fixed value of the allied electric field it will generate a given velocity v and hence the uh, the factor mu would be constant for a given electric field and which will generate a constant velocity vd if you increase the electric field the drift velocity will also increase but your mobility for a given temperature would remain the same. 
So mu is a proportionality factor and is defined as mobility of the charge carriers. How do you define it qualitatively? Because so far we have put it in terms of some mathematical form that um, if there is a force acting on a charged particle due to the electric field, we write it with a formula F is equal to Q into E and this uh, electric field or this force will, due to this electric field, the force is generated and this force in turn will cause acceleration in the motion of the electron while it is, if it is not happening because of the presence of the scattering centers in real semiconductor crystal, what do we end up with? We end up with a constant velocity rather than acceleration. And this velocity is proportional to the electric field strength and the constant of proportionality we had defined as mu. So, so far this was the summary of the drift velocity, the concept of the drift velocity and mobility as a result of the applied electric field. So I read again. So mu is a measure of how easily charge carriers move under the influence of an applied field or mu determines how mobile the charge carriers are. Well, let's um, look Let's uh, go deep into uh, the meaning of this uh, last paragraph. We just said that it's difficult for the electron to move in a real crystal even though there is the electric field present. Why it is difficult? Because electron while moving during its motion along its path encounters um, collision centers in the form of ionized impurities, in the form of vibrating letters atoms, yet it manages, it is able to move. So it is this ability to move that how easily it can move or, or how difficult it is for the electron to move and this ability is termed as mu. As we shall see later that um, this mobility will depend upon uh, two factors, namely what is the device temperature because after all the lattice vibrations are subject to the increase or decrease in the temp temperature. Similarly, the collisions due to ionized impurities again is subject to the concentration of the added impurity. If the impurities are too large, a large concentration of the ionized impurities exists, again you are increasing the ionized uh, collision centers. It will be difficult for the electron to move uh, in a material which has a large concentration of ionized impurity centers. So um, we shall see this dependence of mobility on temperature as well as uh, uh, ionized impurity center in the next few slides. At this point, I would give you another uh, equation. We defined, okay, let's sum up. In the last two lectures, we calculated the free carrier concentration subject to the laws of Fermi Dirac distribution function. Then we are studying, we want to study the motion of these charged particles, which we studied before. The motion, the first motion is a characteristic called drift motion due to the applied electric field. Now the charged particles are moving so what do they constitute? They constitute current. So moving charges constitute current and this is the current equation. The current at the moment has been calculated only for the type of motion which I described as drift current. Here is another representation of the, here is another formula or equation for the mobility of the charge carriers. Now here Q is the electron charge or hole charge. M star is the effective mass of electron or hole mind you 
the charge electronic charge for both electrons and holes is identical but the eff effective mass for holes and electrons are different and we shall use this uh, effective mass for the charge carriers in real numerical problems what is tau we did not explain this term tau or t so far tau is the carrier lifetime or main carrier lifetime what is this here is point one and here is point two now at point one is located or situated a scattering center which could be anything an ionized impurity atom or a lettuce vibrating lettuce atom and again at point two there is a scattering center between two between these two scattering centers let's say the electron is able to move obeying the laws of Newtonian mechanics so it ac accelerates but when it reaches point two it undergoes collision so between these two collision centers between point one and point two it moves without collision so tau is that characteristic time or average mean time which for which the electron moves without making any collision without undergoing any collision or it is the time between two collisions right so mu has uh, another expression now and this uh, expression is the one which we shall be using most of the time while uh, calculating some of the numerical problems so to sum it up again I shall in the next lecture dealing with two important mechanisms of uh, collision namely the lettuce uh, collision and the collision with the impurity atoms when the electron or the holes are moving in real crystals okay I calculated as I said before I calculated the thermal velocity so many times because it is important because it is significant so thermal velocity of the electrons at room temperature is 25 milli electron volt and the velocity that we calculated before the thermal velocity before comes out to be about 10 to the power 7 centimeter per second and in this transparency I have expressed in terms of meter per second so thermal velocity is 10 to the power 5 meters per second what is the drift velocity thermal velocity for room temperature has already been calculated and you know how to calculate it 3 kT over m star drift velocity I just gave you the equation in the previous few uh, slides this comes out to be 150 meters per second so you notice that how small the drift velocity is therefore the significant factor or the significant influence on the electron motion is still that of the thermal motion but nevertheless the applied electric field is uh, playing its part and hence there is a net drift so-called drift in the motion of the uh, electrons whose motion is dominated by thermal velocity characteristic of the thermal velocity so the diff motion is superimposed on the thermal velo velocity and the electron tries to move try, tends to move in the direction of the applied electric field maybe uh, I am able to uh, show you that slide which refers to this um, which explains this concept of the um, here on the right side you see a pure random thermal random motion randomness is characteristic of the thermal motion on the uh, right side of the slide you see the motion in the presence of the applied electric field the left side has no electric field the left side designates a pure random thermal motion of the electron now the field 
has been applied. Mind you, the thermal motion or the thermal velocity is still there because you have not uh, made change the temperature. The temperature of silicon is still 300. Only on top of that you have applied an electric field. So now you can see that the randomness, the characteristic motion in the presence of the applied electric field is superimposed on top of the random nature of the thermal motion and the net result is that electron now tries to move um, following the electric field, following the laws of Newtonian mechanics. So this is what I tried to explain in this transparency. So here we are. This is the current that you get due to this additional component called the drift component. And again, you notice that this drift motion is quite small as compared to the thermal motion. Now, in the previous um, lectures, in the previous, many previous slides, we had been emphasizing the fact that the carrier concentration, free charge carrier concentration in semiconductors is strongly temperature dependent. How strongly? Exponentially. As the temperature increases, the thermal generation, that is breaking of the bonds, increases and more and more free carriers are generated at increased, at enhanced uh, sample temperature. Therefore, the diff velocity and hence <coughs> the mobility would also be temperature dependent, strongly temperature dependent upon, uh, would also be strongly temperature dependent. Now, having uh, expressed, uh, discussed the concept of drift velocity and mobility of charge carriers in a silicon material or a device which is subject to um, an applied electric field, let's discuss the concept of variation of temperature of the material or the device. If you recall, we had all along in our previous lectures and many slides, we have been talking about the importance of temperature um, with respect to the semiconductor material. What happens if we increase the temperature or what happens if we decrease the temperature? Let's recall in our memory the thermal generation process. As we increase the temperature, more and more covalent bonds in the crystal structure would be broken or what we are trying to say is that temperature increase thermal generation rate बढ़ जाएगा क्योंकि आपके और ज़्यादा covalent bonds break हो रहे हैं तो एक तो ये aspect हुआ temperature बढ़ाने का कि अब आपके पास ज़्यादा free charge carriers generate हो रहे हैं temperature बढ़ाने से thermal generation process की वजह से दूसरा ये है कि एक तो concentration बढ़ गई और दूसरा क्या हुआ कि न सिर्फ carrier concentration बढ़ी पूरा क्रिस्टल भी हाईर टेम्परेचर पर अब आपके वाइब्रेट कर रहा है और साथ में आपके कैरियर्स की थर्मल वेलोसिटी भी तो बढ़ रही है तो तीन आ, हमने प्रोसेसिस देखे ये तीन हमने पैरामीटर देखे तीन कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स देखे जो कि टेम्परेचर बढ़ाने की वजह से नज़र आई हमें सेमीकंडक्टर मटेरियल्स में तो वो क्या है एक दफ़ा फिर दोहराते हैं कि टेम्परेचर बढ़ाने से थर्मल जनरेशन प्रोसेस की वजह से कैरियर की कंसंट्रेशन बढ़ गई एक नुक्ता दूसरा नुक्ता ये कि थर्मल वेलोसिटी थ्री बाई टू के टी अब टी आपका बढ़ गया ना तो आप थ्री हंड्रेड के तो नहीं लगाएंगे कुछ हायर वैल्यू लगाएंगे तो थर्मल वेलोसिटी बढ़ गई कैरियर कंसनट्रेशन बढ़ी थर्मल वेलोसिटी बढ़ी तीसरा क्या हुआ कि वो लेटेस्ट जिसमें के वो इलेक्ट्रॉन घूम रहे हैं या पड़े हुए हैं या मौजूद हैं वो भी तो हायर टेम्परेचर्स पे ज़्यादा उनकी वाइब्रेशन ज़्यादा हो गई इन्हांस्ड लेटेस्ट वाइब्रेशन तो इन तीन वजूहत की वजह से किस पर फ़र्क पड़ा मोबिलिटी पर सबसे पहले ड्रिफ वेलोसिटी पर और फिर उसके बाद मोबिलिटी पर तो हा, हायर टेम्परेचर पर क्या हुआ कि अब हम 
ऐसे करते हैं कि टेम्परेचर को दो हिस्सों में बांट लेते हैं लो टेम्परेचर रीजन एंड हायर टेम्परेचर रीजन अब देखिए ज़रा इंटिवली हम सोचते हैं अगर टेम्परेचर्स लो हैं चलें कुछ थोड़ी बहुत आपके सिग्निफिकेंट थर्मल जनरेशन हुई मगर इतनी ज़्यादा नहीं हुई सिग्निफिकेंट पार्ट ऑफ फ्री कैरियर कंसनट्रेशन अभी भी आपका आइनाइज ओपन टेम्प्योरिटी से आ रहा है तो अच्छा लो टेम्परेचर्स पे क्या हो रहा है तो मैंने अभी तीन नुक्ते बताए थे टेम्परेचर के साथ तो इलेक्ट्रॉन कंसनट्रेशन मसलन इलेक्ट्रॉन कंसनट्रेशन मोरलेस वही रही जो पहले थी मटीरियल में थर्मल वेलोसिटी भी कोई इतनी ज़्यादा नहीं बढ़ी टेम्परेचर को 300 से ऊपर ले जाने में तो इलेक्ट्रॉन स्लो मूव कर रहा है इसे स्लो मूविंग इलेक्ट्रॉन क्योंकि टेम्परेचर बहुत ज़्यादा आपने नहीं बढ़ाया तो आपके डोनर और एक्सेप्टर इम्प्योरिटी आइटम्स पड़े हुए हैं बीच में लेट मी गो बैक और फिर से मैं तीनों का जिक्र करूँ इलेक्ट्रॉन कंसनट्रेशन लो टेम्परेचर पर इतनी ज़्यादा सिग्निफिकेंटली नहीं बढ़ी थर्मल वेलोसिटी भी इतनी ज़्यादा नहीं बढ़ी लेटस वाइब्रेशन भी इतनी ज़्यादा नहीं बढ़ी तो फिर इलेक्ट्रॉन जब स्लो मूविंग इलेक्ट्रॉन है वो क्रिस्टल में से गुजर रहा है उसको इम्प्योरिटी आइटम्स नज़र आ रहे हैं आयोनाइज इम्प्योरिटी आइटम्स नज़र आ रहे हैं वो उनकी वजह से डिफ्लेक्ट होगा अगर वो डोनर आइटम है तो वो उसकी तरफ अट्रैक्ट होगा अगर वो एक्सेप्टर आइटम है तो उससे वो रिपेल होगा तो उसकी मोशन में फ़र्क तो आया ना स्केटरिंग तो हुई ना मूविंग इलेक्ट्रॉन की तो एट लो टेम्परेचर्स फिर क्या इम्पोर्टेंट हुआ प्रेजेंस ऑफ द आइनाइज इम्प्योरिटी जो है वो इलेक्ट्रॉन की मोशन को ज़्यादा इफेक्ट कर रही है जैसे मैंने अभी बताया और क्या इम्पोर्टेंट या सिग्निफिकेंट नहीं है क्योंकि लेटिस बहुत थोड़ा कम वाइब्रेट कर रही है तो लेटिस स्केटरिंग लो टेम्परेचर्स पर इतनी सिग्निफिकेंट नहीं है तो वो मोबिलिटी टेम्परेचर वो मोबिलिटी फैक्टर जो कि इम्प्योरिटी से अफेक्ट हो रहा है प्रेजेंस ऑफ इम्प्योरिटी से अफेक्ट हो रहा है उस मोबिलिटी uh, कंपोनेंट को हिस्से को मैं कह देती हूँ म्यू आई म्यू विद सब्सक्रिप्ट आई यानी वो मोबिलिटी जो कि इम्प्योरिटी की वजह से ज़्यादा अफेक्ट हो रही है और ये कब होगी लो टेम्परेचर्स अब आप टेम्परेचर बढ़ाएँ टेम्परेचर के बढ़ाने से क्या होता है आपकी आइनाइज इम्प्योरिटी तो जितनी थी वो तो उतनी रही क्योंकि वो तो डोपन इम्प्योरिटी आपने पहले से डाली हुई है थर्मल वेलोसिटी भी बढ़ी लेकिन साथ साथ आपके लेटेस्ट वाइब्रेशन भी सिग्निफिकेंट हो गई अब थर्मल वेलोसिटी के बढ़ने से क्या है? हो रहा है कि इलेक्ट्रॉन तेज़ी से गुजर जाता है ज़्यादा तेज़ी से गुजर जाता है बनस्बत लो टेम्परेचर्स के किसके पास से आइनाइज इम्प्योरिटी सेंट यानी डोनर या एक्सेप्टर के पास से तेज़ी से गुजर रहा है लिहाजा उसको कम वक्त मिलता है डिफ्लेक्ट या होने के लिए या स्केटर होने के लिए तो फिर आइनाइज इम्प्योरिटी कम असर कर रही है कैरियर की मोशन पर कब हाई टेम्परेचर्स पर मगर अब लेटर्स भी तो वायलेंटली मूव कर रही है तो फिर लेटर्स आइटम्स के साथ इलेक्ट्रॉन की स्केटरिंग के चांसेस बढ़ गए सो लेट समराइज इट अगेन लो टेम्परेचर्स पर ज़्यादा चांसेस हैं कि इलेक्ट्रॉन पॉजिटिव डोनर या नेगेटिव एक्सेप्टर के साथ कोलिजन करे लेटर्स आइटम्स इतने ज़्यादा सिग्निफिकेंटली वाइब्रेट नहीं कर रहे अभी आप टेम्परेचर बढ़ा दें आइनाइज इम्प्योरिटी डोनर और एक्सेप्टर के पास से इलेक्ट्रॉन तेज़ी से गुजर जाता है उनसे डिफ्लेक्ट नहीं होता मगर लेटिस की स्केटरिंग बढ़ने की वजह से लेटेस्ट आइटम्स के साथ अब वो कोलिजन हो जाती हैं तो फिर हमने क्या कहा कि हाई टेम्परेचर्स पर म्यू एल कंपोनेंट बिकम्स इम्पॉर्टेंट दैट इज लेटेस्ट स्केटरिंग बिकम्स इम्पॉर्टेंट और लो uh, टेम्परेचर्स पर कैरियर की मोबिलिटी कम होगी जैसे जैसे टेम्परेचर लो होगा वैसे वैसे इलेक्ट्रॉन के लिए मूव करना भी आ, मुश्किल होगा क्योंकि ज़्यादा कोलिजन हो रही हैं स्केटरिंग सेंटर्स के साथ तो जैसे जैसे आप टेम्परेचर इंक्रीज करेंगे अब जिस तरह मैंने स्लाइड में लिखा है मैं आपको उस तरह एक्सप्लेन करने की कोशिश करती हूँ लेट्स लुक एट म्यू एल म्यू आई एज यू इंक्रीज द टेम्परेचर इम्प्योरिटी स्केटरिंग की कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन 
जो है लेटस इम्प्योरिटी स्केटरिंग की प्रॉबिलिटी कम हो जाती है लिहाजा बाई इंक्रीजिंग द टेम्परेचर म्यू आई इंक्रीजिंग इंक्रीज लेकिन जब आप टेम्परेचर मज़ीद बढ़ाते चले जाएँ तो फिर आपकी मोबिलिटी डिक्रीज़ होना शुरू हो जाती है क्योंकि अब आपकी लेटस स्केटरिंग की प्रॉबिलिटी बढ़ गई है आई थिंक यू बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस ट्रांसपेरेंसी ने बैठे हुए कि लो टेम्परेचर्स पे मोबिलिटी म्यू आई इज़ इम्पोर्टेंट एंड एट हाई टेम्परेचर्स इज द लेटस स्केटरिंग व्हिच इज़ इम्पोर्टेंट सो एट लो टेम्परेचर्स इम्प्योरिटी मोबिलिटी ड्यू टू इम्प्योरिटी कंपोनेंट इज सिग्निफिकेंट एंड म्यू आई डिक्रीजेज वन टेम्परेचर इंक्रीजेज डिक्रीजेज और म्यू आई इंक्रीजेज एज टेम्परेचर इंक्रीजेज सो कर्व वुड गो लाइक दैट और इसकी टेम्परेचर डिपेंडेंस जो है वो अप्रॉक्सीमेटली वन पॉइंट फाइव है इम्प्योरिटी स्केटरिंग का uh, जो इम्पेरिकल फॉर्मूला है वो सी इज सम कॉन्स्टेंट इम्प्योरिटी फॉर्मूला ये है कि जैसे जैसे आप टेम्परेचर बढ़ाते हैं इम्प्योरिटी मोबिलिटी बढ़ती है क्योंकि टेम्परेचर बढ़ाने से इम्प्योरिटी के साथ स्केटरिंग की प्रोबेबिलिटी कम हो रही है सो इट इंक्रीज समोरलेस विद ए वन पॉइंट फाइव टेम्परेचर डिपेंडेंस तो ये अब आपको uh, वो चीज़ नज़र आ गई जो मैं पहले आपको दिखाना चाह रही थी लेस कंसनट्रेट ऑन दी राइट साइड ऑफ दिस ट्रांसपेरेंसी फर्स्ट आई हैव प्लॉटेड द टेम्परेचर ऑन द एक्स एक्सिस एंड द मोबिलिटी ऑन द वाई एक्सिस बोथ हैव बीन टेकन टू बी इन द लॉग स्केल क्योंकि अब हम जो टेम्परेचर्स हैं वो थ्री हंड्रेड या जीरो से लेकर थाउजेंड्स ऑफ टेम्परेचर्स की बात कर रहे हैं तो आप अगर इस बॉक्स की um, लेफ्ट साइड को देखें इस कर्व um, की लेक्स लेफ्ट साइड को देखें तो लो टेम्परेचर्स पर जैसे जैसे हम लेस से सम मिड पॉइंट पर पीक अगर आपको जो इस कर्व की पीक इस कर्व की टॉप पीक पे देखें तो जब हम पीक से नीचे की तरफ जा रहे हैं ये क्या हो रहा है कर्व से हम जब डाउन हिल जा रहे हैं लेफ्ट साइड पे जब हम पीक की इस कर्व की पीक से डाउन हिल जा रहे हैं तो आपका टेम्परेचर डिक्रीज हो रहा है टेम्परेचर डिक्रीज होने से क्या हो रहा है थर्मल वेलोसिटी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स की भी डिक्रीज हो रही है अब वो आइनाइज इम्प्योरिटी के कुर्ब जवार में ज़्यादा टाइम स्पेंड कर रहे हैं लिहाजा मोबिलिटी कम होगी क्योंकि स्केटरिंग के चांसेस बढ़ गए इसी चीज़ को हम दूसरी तरह कैसे कहेंगे जैसे जैसे टेम्परेचर आपका बढ़ रहा है वैसे वैसे आपकी थर्मल वेलासिटी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स की बढ़ रही है आयोनाइज इम्प्योरिटी के साथ स्केटरिंग के चांसेस कम हो रहे हैं मोबिलिटी बढ़ रही है सो ऑन दी लेफ्ट साइड ऑफ दिस कर्व मोबिलिटी इंक्रीजेस विद इंक्रीजिंग टेम्परेचर एंड दिस पार्ट ऑफ द कर्व इज नोन एज इम्प्योरिटी कंपोनेंट ऑफ मोबिलिटी एंड द सेम हैपन्स एट हायर टेम्परेचर बिकॉज ऑफ इन्हांस लेटस वाइब्रेशन मोबिलिटी नाउ डिक्रीजेस दैट हैपन्स एट हाई टेम्परेचर सो द राइट साइड ऑफ द पार्ट ऑफ दिस कर्व इज नोन एज लेटस स्केटरिंग और लेटस मोबिलिटी ऑन द लेफ्ट साइड इट इज द इम्प्योरिटी स्केटरिंग इफ यू सम इट अप द कम्पोनेंट ड्यू टू मोबिलिटी कम्पोनेंट ड्यू टू इम्प्योरिटी एंड द मोबिलिटी कम्पोनेंट ड्यू टू लेटस स्केटरिंग सो यू हैव अ रिलेशनशिप शोन एट द बॉटम ऑफ द स्लाइड this is what i had been this curve is the one i had wanted to show you uh, when i was explaining a few minutes ago uh, what is happening with temperature what is happening to the mobility with temperature i'm sure you can appreciate it better now by looking at this schematic uh, schematic illustration let's begin with the uh, right side at low temperature as i explained a dozen times before mobility increases as temperature increases on the left side as the temperature increases mobility decreases now if you combine them together what do you get a tent like figure or a tent like um, illustration of mobility versus temperature now how high this peak would be that would depend upon 
the doping concentration and I can show you another slide for two different doping concentrations in a given material intuitively at this point um, I can explain that let's look at this uh, bottom uh, curve where mobility rises and then drops supposing you have uh, a highly doped semiconductor material you would appreciate that now the peak point will be lower higher the dopant impurity the lower would be the uh, peak point of this impurity uh, of this mobility curve because now because of the presence of large concentration of dopant impurity large concentration of ionized donors and ionized acceptors it will be difficult for it will be even difficult for the electron to move in a highly doped semiconductor so the peak point will uh, be, uh, become even lower okay the next um, topic which is we discuss the carrier concentration we have discussed the special velocity of the electrons uh, in spite of the scattering center and we called it drift velocity and then we characterize we introduced another characteristic of the semiconductor material or introduced another parameter namely the mobility and we also discussed um, the two mechanisms of scattering namely the impurity scattering and the letter scattering having discussed these three or four uh, different topics now we arrive at the calculation of the currents that are being produced or that are flowing in this material uh, which is sub in which the motion is that of uh, drift motion where the characteristic of the semiconductor material is uh, defined in terms of mobility and so on and so forth so let's calculate the current densities and the conductivity of this sample that we had been talking about so far okay i begin uh, with the calculation of the conductivity of a given semiconductor sample by revising your memory of the basic knowledge of electronics and that is how do you define the resistance of this bar that I have shown on the right side of this slide. This is again the typical case of a silicon bar which is subject to uh, which has been uh, applied a certain potential hence the direction of the electric field is shown and also the direction of the motion of the holes. In this uh, particular example holes in the bar semiconductor bar semiconductor sample move along the direction of the applied electric field and the resistance is uh, um, expressed by this mathematical relationship where rho is the resistivity l is the length of the bar and w and t are the thickness and width of the semiconductor bar which is uh, shown here the current density in this uh, case is uh, uh, a parameter which is expressed in terms of the applied electric field E and the resistivity for both uh, n-type material and p-type material we obtain these two relationships and the resistance is shown on the uh, bottom of the um, the bottom equation now let's look at the first uh, um, term conventionally or basically the electric field strength is defined as the gradient of the applied potential V over L and here I have shown the um, um, on the right side in the schematic diagram I have shown the applied potential and the length of the bar is L so electric field is simply the gradient of the potential that is V the applied potential divided by the length or the distance between the two terminals across which the potential has been applied the total current is a product of the current density times the area which is equal to V over R uh, as we obtained this uh, we obtained this relationship before 
Now, these relationships can be calculated very easily by combining the few basic uh, relations that we had shown in the previous two or three slides. Here I have calculated the current density due to holes separately and the current density due to electrons se uh, separately because number one the charges for the holes and electrons would be different but that's not such a big uh, major factor is the effective mass which I mentioned earlier that the effective mass for both electrons and holes are quite different so you have to calculate the component of uh, current density hole component and the electron component of the current density separately by using different effective masses therefore the total uh, drift component of the current density would be a sum of electron contribution and the sum of the hole contribution and which comes out to be um, this equation at the bottom now for a given semiconductor material at a given temperature at a given fixed dopant uh, concentration the two terms in the parenthesis would be common and this is termed as uh, sigma I have taken uh, this to be a sigma which is defined as the uh, conductivity of the semiconductor material so total current density therefore is sigma times E where E is the uh, electric field I'm sorry for some reason you are not able to see the exact relationship but we can deduce it from the top the term in the parenthesis parenthesis is defined as conductivity of the silicon sample as obtained from the simple discussion that we had uh, arrived at so far the units of this conductivity are more per centimeter another different relationship for the resistivity of the same material whose conductivity we had can calculated because conductivity sigma and resistivity rho are reciprocal to each other so this slide simply shows you the relation the interplay of the relation one with the other and the other with the first one now mobility and uh, drift currents can be combined and expressed in terms of this simple relationship both for uh, electrons as well as holes in terms of the another important um, parameter namely tau the colli mean collision time for the electrons or for the holes so uh, before moving on to the second uh, type or another different nature of motion which is the diffusion because in the beginning in the introduction I mentioned that the electrons or charge carriers for that matter both electrons and holes move under the influence of an applied electric field if there is one if you apply an electric field the charge carriers present in the sample or the device would move under the influence of an applied electric field and this special motion we call as drift motion this drift motion is characterized in term in turn by another characteristic of the material namely the mobility and we calculate the conductivity which is an average or total behavior of all the electrons all the charge carriers moving in that material the second type of motion I would postpone for my next lecture that is diffusion but I would like to mention just for a minute what diffusion is because I made a special reference to that uh, in in terms of the diode semiconductor diodes and p-n junction because p-n junctions are characterized by this special property you have holes uh, a majority hole concentration on one side and minority hole concentration on the end side of a p-n junction so therefore because of the presence of this concentration gradient uh, in a p-n junction or even in in uh, otherwise the carriers would start to move from higher concentration to lower concentration and that motion would be termed as diffusion so just like we calculated the drift current component the current densities 
and current drift currents similarly we can calculate the diffusion motion and diffusion currents that discussion we will postpone for our next lecture so let me summarize again what we did uh, what we have learned or discussed so far in this lecture the most important being that mobility does not increase linearly with the uh, temperature it has a tent like structure and the peak of that curve is uh, dependent upon the dopant concentration or density of the ionized impurity and secondly uh, there are devices where we do want to have higher concentration of donor or acceptor impurities that is there are devices which have a large number of ionized acceptor and uh, ionized donor concentration in such highly doped samples therefore there will be more the electrons and holes will uh, suffer higher number of scatterings and have thus lower mobility than in the samples which were um, not so heavily doped so that means the low values of mobility is at the cost of enhancing the carrier concentration which is so we we gain one thing we gain one factor that is increased carrier concentration but on the other hand we lose on mobility the mobility decreases but there are certain devices in which uh, this characteristic can be exploited to our advantage and those are high electron mobility transistors because where electrons are made to move in undoped material with the resulting high carrier mobility so mobility and resistivity depend on the material properties effective mass is different for both electrons and holes and sample properties for example um, whether material is within course a perfect crystal or an imperfect crystal which has too many um, crystal defects and those crystal defects we term with a subscript t that is the density of the trap traps and we differentiate between the density of the traps that is the scattering centers due to imperfections in the crystalline structure with those of the density of the added impurity centers so those are termed as nd that is the donor and acceptor impurities and this one is termed as the trap centers so highly doped samples will therefore cause more scattering and have low mobility than low doped samples and this low doped samples uh, in which uh, you require higher um, electron mobility uh, is uh, in low doped sample obviously the mobility will be higher and this phenomenon this property can be utilized in high speed devices called high electron mobility transistors where electrons are made to move in undoped material with the resulting high carrier mobilities so we can join uh, point number four with point number two that in the intrinsic material or in the low doped materials even though the carrier concentration is small yet it is compensated this fact of uh, low carrier concentration can be compensated by achieving higher mobilities and finally i uh, point i would like to explain the third point which says that not only the mobility is dependent upon uh, dopant concentration and temperature it is also dependent upon the effective masses and how perfect or imperfect the crystal is because other defects or uh, surface defects or crystalline defects also act as scattering centers so thank you so much and i do hope this was um, uh, an enjoyable concept for you to understand that 
even though the electrons are moving in applied electric field yet their motion is different from the motion of the electrons in vacuum thank you so much and we shall meet again to discuss the diffusion of the charge carriers in our next lecture okay